Hello everyone and welcome once again to ThursDev. I'm your host Luke, and today I wanted to begin to talk a little bit about game balance. Consider today's video something of an overview. I hope to get in depth about game balance over the course of a few videos, but today I'd like to explore what game balance is, its effects on a game's enjoyability, and the designer's relationship with game balance. There are a lot of varying things that factor into whether a game is enjoyable or not for a player. So many, really, that it would be irresponsible for me to even to attempt to convince you definitively what the true spark of fun in a game is, as every game is an exercise in equilibrium of a huge number of spinning plates. But I believe that there is a common thread that compels us as gamers. One of the primary differences between games and traditional media is that, as more than just a regular interactive media, the quintessential game seeks to challenge its player, to provide not only entertainment but also some hardship in some form or another. What I mean by that is, people play games not purely as a way to be entertained, but also as a way for them to exercise their mental abilities, whether it be against another human being in a test of wits or wills, or against the game itself. A game is something that can be both won and lost. We subject ourselves to games because we crave, somewhere within, some mental stimulation that runs far deeper than just passively consuming entertainment, like watching television or listening to music. It has the potential to scratch a sort of primal itch that we have to challenge ourselves, while still being entirely safe and, in many cases, even relaxed. Of course, not everything that challenges us and can result in success and failure is entertainment, and in many cases the experience of dealing with a challenge isn't enjoyable in the least. The main draw of the challenge of a game is that it's something that, at its core, is fair and winnable. This is what makes it all the more frustrating when a game is needlessly difficult or unbalanced. Balance, in the context of video games, refers typically to the overall interaction of game mechanics, and whether the interaction is equitable. If there's any situation wherein there's a clear, irrevocable advantage given to one side or another in the interaction thereof, a game is said to be unbalanced and, generally speaking, it behooves us to alter it to attempt to achieve balance as designers. A game can be as solid and bug-free as you could ever wish for, but if the game feels unfair, regardless of its ability, a player will still not be able to enjoy themselves. Balance creates fairness, or at least one form thereof. During the process of developing a game, the quest for game balance is one of the most drawn-out and long-term processes, as mechanics are introduced and tweaked constantly. This isn't to say that it's impossible to set ground rules for defining and maintaining balance. In order to plan for it, the designer can frequently work from a macro to micro level by defining end goals and working backward from that to get interim numbers, but even the best mathematical algorithms frequently fail to produce a fun factor. Difficulty is also a subjective thing, as there are many players who would very matter-of-factly say that Dark Souls is more fun than Mario, for example, because it's difficult, but fair and extremely well-balanced. It's a great equalizer, so long as it keeps its components more or less equal. In the current era of games as a service, even post-launch games are constantly being tweaked and altered to chase further and further a perfect balance, and thanks to the internet, player metrics, tracking, and the nature of connected content, it's become easier and easier for us to do so, but due to the nature of a release game being actively played, and in the interest of not alienating or confusing players, extreme changes are usually frowned upon. Online games for players have become as much a game of chasing the meta as they are perfecting a character or a build, as stats shift and usefulness waxes and wanes. Players crunch the numbers and chase their strategies, exposing weaknesses and imbalances, and we as designers react to this by plugging holes, fixing exploits wherever possible, and attempting, whenever possible, to ensure that the game remains as balanced as possible. In a perfect world, any sensible composition of characters in a game like Overwatch, for example, would be viable. The team composition may need to shift over the course of the game to counter opponent strategies, but at no time should one character be only useful for a specific part of a game, or be useful in every possible situation. Both of these scenarios are examples of an imbalance, either in favor of or against the character, and therefore the player who is attempting to use them. In some cases, these problems can be fixed with subtle massaging of stats numbers, a little more damage output here, a few more hit points there. But from time to time, if a problem is too large, or perhaps a new character is to be added and therefore upsets the balance, the developers put in the position of needing to take drastic measures to fix it. 
Full redesigns are not unheard of, but hopefully rare, and when they're done, they must be done in such a way that they won't need to do it again. Decent balance is tricky to achieve. With the spiderweb of interdependencies and counterpieces to any mechanic, tuning one frequently means the need to tune others, to the point that perfect balance is perhaps something of a pipe dream for anything more complex than a platformer. Balance must be strived for, however, as it can easily make or break a game. And the release of a well-balanced game ultimately can be seen as one of the hallmarks of a good systems designer. I've devoted a good amount of my career as a designer on learning what I can about game balancing, and I hope to pass on some of that knowledge to you. So over the next couple of videos, I intend to devote some time to exploring game balance in depth, including topics like chasing the meta, top-down balancing, and the Sid Meier method. We'll look at strategy games, RPGs, puzzles, and many more, and I hope that even if design isn't your trade, that the next few videos will be informative and perhaps even useful to you, whether you're a player or a creator. I hope that you'll join me as we delve into game balance, beginning next week on Thursday. Until then, however, thank you as always for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to have you come by, and I do hope that you'll check out more of what we have to offer, including videos like this one, game industry news and editorials every Sunday, and a plethora of Let's Plays of games both old and new, including a series of videos where I play games like Mass Effect with the people who helped create them. Either way, though, thank you very much for watching this far, and take care.